Now it's a startup time again, and we have Lauritz of Microshade. Welcome to EcoSummit. Thank you. Hello, everybody. It's great to be here, and it's great to be in such an innovative building. And still, as you've seen in a couple of minutes, uh, the technology I'm going to be presenting to you can actually do quite substantial um, improvements still to this building. Um, so. Um, what you're going to be seeing here is a very commercial-oriented pitch for two reasons. First of all, this is what Microshade needs to do. It's a technology that is proven, and what you'll see is how we're accelerating this. Second of all, I'm the new CEO, and this is what I was brought on to do. And it's also my sweet spot. Just a little my background. I've always worked in high growth um, and, uh, and turnarounds. I've, um, I've had done several startups in the early part of my career. Um, I worked for Hewlett Packard, where I built an independent business unit to, from zero to $250 million in 27 countries in three years. I did a turnaround at an independent subsidy at Astro Telecom, which is uh, a large uh, global telecom systems supplier. And I've done counseling into venture, which is also my entry point into this company, because the, the, the investors, especially Seth being one of them, asked me to look at the company and why it wasn't kicking off. We were created before Facebook, by the way, so we've been there a while. Um, and... Um, I came back and said, you need to do totally different. You need to turn the strategy upside down. And then they said, why don't you do it? And that's why I'm here. So let's look into it. Quickly, 10-year-old um, company, commercial for five years, 10 employees, employers, employees um, half of them being engineers, the other half being corporate entrepreneurs, which means people who worked in corporate, schooled in corporates, however, have done entrepreneurial tasks like myself. Um, we're partnering up with the biggest glass suppliers in Europe, I'll come into what our technology is in a couple of minutes. And we've done this strategic turnaround, and what I'm going to show today is really fundamentally um, how we're accelerating and what these strategies are. And of course, we are looking for a little funding, so uh, hopefully somebody will uh, come to me afterwards and, and we'll have a dialogue about this. We launched a strategy in Q2. Uh, since then, we've grown 150% the last four months versus total 200 to 212 cells. Um, and uh, some, some new successes down here is uh, the new Carl Zeiss headquarter in Germany. Uh, this new Spartabank in Nuremberg, as well as um, the VTC high-rise in Heilbronn. So let's jump into it. What is the technology? Just quickly, one uh, quick reference. This is uh, for the architects here. This is the new Confederate industry uh, building in Copenhagen. This building could not be built without microshade. This is a huge glass atrium. And fundamentally, with microshade in this, they're able to build this. The alternative solution for this was to remove 75% of the glazing in order to meet, meet the, the, the energy demands of the building. So fundamentally, what does that technology do? Well, we've taken the characteristics of external solar shading, as you know it, remove the sun coming into the room. And we integrated this into a small lamella structure that we integrate into the glazing. So fundamentally, when you look, I'll show you in a photo in a couple of minutes, when you put our product into the glazing, the sun doesn't come into the room and that's where all the energy is. And that means that we get a G-value. G-value is the percentage of energy that comes through the glazing all the way down to 0 0.08. And in comparison, the best technologies in the market available commercial today does 0 0.27. And you can do the delta because that is at minimum 60% better energy versus competitive technology. And of course, this has massive OPEX uh, influence on the building. Um, and the only real competitors at the moment in the market, there are new technologies that are coming into the market, but the only competitors we see it that can actually deliver this kind of performance is external solar shading. Um, however, as you'll see in a couple of minutes, there are many ways where they're not able to deploy their technology, and that's where we have our sweet spot. So just the last product slide. Fundamentally, microshade you can see on that side, that's the structure put in, and here you have solar control glass. Here you see the G values. What you see is that we transmit natural light colors. So what you see a much clearer view on the outside with microshade. We do not touch the light transmission quality. And second of all, as we're not allowing the sun to come into the room, um, we get a very, very low G value. Also, we're able to position desks all close to the table because no direct sun comes into the room. We are progressive. So when the sun stands lower in the horizon because of the holes, how they're positioned, we actually open up the technology. So in other words, during the winter time, we can actually allow a G value all the way down to 0 0.35. What does this mean? Well, we're integrated into the glazing, which means we're 100% maintenance free, no automation, no configura configuration, no possibility to override the technology. You can install it everywhere. This is especially the architects that like this. You can build energy efficient building without having to think about putting external shading on the outside. And then, 
what you'll see in a couple of minutes is we can document we will always be the best long-term investment if you want to fix this situation. So let's take the building where we are. So I did a quick calculation. Safai could do this as well. Uh, we have also our little mini tool that we can do this on our website. So if anybody wants to check it out, go to our website and you can do this calculation yourself. So I am assuming here that the technologies used in the glazing are the best available in the market. So 0.27% G value. And still, if you look at this, you can see we're still able to reduce 60% of the energy penetrating to your south facades. If this was an office building, those 60% had to be cooled. And that's really what the proposition is with microshade. So um, go to the website and you can do this yourself. It takes really 60 seconds to do this calculation and I'll be sure to talk to these architects in a couple of minutes. So fundamentally two strategies. One thing, go into renovation and retrofit. 90% of what goes into the building industry in Europe at the moment, cost-wise or investment-wise, is into renovation. It's a massive market. Um, and we're going to sell the result of microshade directly into that. Second of all, new build, where our external solar shading is not possible. There's actually a lot of deployment areas where that is. So fundamentally, what is the penetration angle? So going into the, um, uh, the real estate uh, segment, um, we're now penetrating at executive level. We're Danish-based, so we go into the larger players there, and we do a double penetration strategy. We go to the asset managers with these propositions. Really improve your energy profile of your buildings, dramatically improve fixed indoor climate situations, remove potentially the need for cooling, reduce vacancy periods due to better attractiveness, and utilize your square meters better. And fundamentally, get it all for free. Because we can finance a document, we can do this purely over OPEC savings. So we're not talking about financing microshade, we're talking about financing the renovation of the building through this alone. Then we go to the pension funds, to the owners, because we can document with a technology that has no variables, a guaranteed 10% internal rate of return. So this is compared to buying coffee, US IT stocks. We can guarantee if they invest in their own portfolio, they get an ROI of 10%. And of course, this proposition is really driven by our core value proposition. So what is important to note here is we're really not selling a product into this segment, we're selling a partnership because we come with everything. We come with all the calculations, we come with all the, uh, the contractors. We simply just want to highlight where is it possible for us to go and do this. And in two months, we launched this August 1st, we're already talking to the 10 largest players in Denmark at executive level. Every single one of them have gone into strategic partnership with us. We already identified 50 buildings. Eight of those need to make a decision over the next four months. The potential alone on these 10 players, and I even added some of the other ones we're talking to over there, those 10 players alone, we can document on southern facing facades over a 20-year period, we will be the best solution for indoor climate and we will be the best financial option. The potential loan for those are 2.2 billion euro. So it's quite substantial, the potential of microshade technology. Of course, somebody needs to put the money up front because there's a high capex investment but a very strong OPEX profile. So that's one strategy. The other thing is position your technology where you have no real competition. I'll show you some of our new examples because there are actually three areas where there are not, it's not possible to put external shading. High rises, we just won the VT set towel in Hybron. This is one of the new cases. Large glass facades where you're not able to put external shading. We just won the new Carl Zeiss headquarter in Germany. And of course, large roof structures. So these are three areas where you put micro shade in you really do not have an alternative. You want to meet those energy uh, requirements. And also the new legislations that's coming out, especially we see on, 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 uh, on large buildings, it is very, very difficult to meet those if you don't have something that can bring down that G value. So just the last slide on technology. This is just to compare because we're now moving rapidly into the, um, into the, into the sky, uh, skyscraper space. These are the three options architects fundamentally have. Internal blights into the glazing, double facade, which is the typical solution, for, for skyscrapers, and then you have microshade. And if you look over a 25-year period, and you look at uh, the total uh, cost of doing a double facade, which is the normal solution, you would pay 10x of what you'd have to pay for microshade. With this proposition, we don't think we need to go into the beginning of the sales cycle. Fundamentally, we're now calling up projects that are gone into earth, into the ground, and we're actually getting into those projects because the proposition is so strong. So this is all new. This is the new strategy that we launched in Q2, uh, but we're really starting to see, see it to kick off, both with new potential deals, but definitely also with real sales. So uh, last slide, where I'm standing here. Well, 
with this strategy, we expect to be here in 18 months, as you can see at the top. We expect to have at least five of these strategic partnerships in, Nord in the Nordics, one global partnership. We expect to have 20 deals in the, in the roof segment, and we expect to have 12 either skyscrapers or large facades. As you can see, we have several solutions today. The idea is to prove that this strategy is, is working in a statistical market representative environment, and it's easy scalable. In order to go there, we need $2.5 million. One of those um, is coming at minimum from a current investment base, so we're looking for 1.5 million euros. Half of that needs to go into improving my supply chain, the other half is bridge funding. And then, 18 months from now, we either exit because of this, because as you can see, if you're Sankobang or Dow Corning, I think you can see if we're able to do that, there's a good chance that you can scale that uh, beyond two countries into 100 countries. So fundamentally, that was my incredibly quick pitch here. I hope everybody uh, were able to fully understand everything. I was trying to do a 30-minute presentation in eight minutes. Um, so that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Do you have a question for Lauritz? Yes. Hello. Uh, thank you for your presentation. It was really interesting. Uh, but I was surprised to see uh, that none of your target markets at the moment are Southern European countries. Yes, uh, fundamentally, um, uh, and I see this a lot when I've been counseling into venture, um, uh, what you need to remember is how big is the market that's near to you? Um, we, we're an old company, and what you can see what we're able to do in a very, very short while in the countries where we are. And you look at a market with a potential where I could easily grow my business a thousand times in the countries I am already. Having to go to new countries, having to set myself up, really trying to understand them. Yes, it makes a lot of sense, and this is potentially what we're going to do when we reach that B round in 18 months from now. But fundamentally now, I really want to execute um, where I'm already set up, where people know the technology and where I have the infrastructure to deliver. So that's why. Yeah. But would you uh, be up to uh, establish commercial partnerships with, uh, I don't know, ESCO, ESCOs in, uh, in Southern Europe? Absolutely, and we are looking at partnerships, um, but fundamentally... Um, it would be joint venture structures. I'm looking for somebody to front my business um, in those countries. We, do want, we don't want to go there uh, and set up passive relationships, as I say. If we go and build relationships, it's somebody who has an execution power, somebody who can go and execute what I just demonstrated here. So it needs to be somebody who's able to go and, and penetrate the market in front of us. If somebody's interested to do that, I'm more than happy to set up those, but I'm not going to invest from a, with resources in those countries the next 18 months. So let's have a talk if you know somebody like that. Okay, one more question from Anna. <laughs> so really interested in the different orientation um, and how your product addresses that. So we've got, say, a big tower in Sydney. I can understand completely how you got this fixed product for the south elevation based on a certain angle of sun. How are you coping with manufacturing a whole load of different scenarios? So we have 10 different products, and we can fund fundamentally create a product at any orientation. The thing is, when you have a technology that is so much better than a competitive technology, it doesn't matter if we're 2 3% off. So we would only go and create special products if you're talking a couple of thousand square meters of facade. But fundamentally, what we do, we have a calculator where you can quickly see what technology would actually uh, deliver what kind of result on that facade on anywhere in the, in, anywhere in the, worth, in the world. And we can sit down, if you're talking something different, as long as it's long scale and then we, uh, big scale, then we can always create a special product for that. But let's have a talk afterwards. I'll, I'll, and don't leave either. <laughs> okay, Thomas, final question, short one, short answer. Okay, just a <laughs> quick technical question. Um, the very low G value during summertime of 0.08, um, is that with regard to only beam radiation or is it uh, an average value for the total summer, uh, including diffuse radiation? So it's, it's the full glazing performance of, of the glazing. So it's fully competitive, uh, comparable with, uh, with the G-value you would have of uh, a Sankobang glazing. Which would be calculated at direct normal radiation. Uh, so Unfortunately, yes, but we would actually do better if you, if you were not to assume that. So when you, you come down, and again, I'll show you, because fundamentally we are against that kind of uh, assumption, because our technology actually delivers better when you do n discharge that approach. All right, thank you very much. Thank Here's you. your speaker gift. Thank you. It sounds great. Mm -hmm.